all on the line in Eugene. If Oregon wins, they go to the Pac-12 championship game. Win that, they're in the college football playoff. But to have that opportunity, for them to have their shot at a playoff berth, they have to get past their in-state rival who kept them out of the Pac-12 championship game last year. So what's going to happen, guys? Will Oregon State beat the Ducks again and ruin their in-state rivals' hopes of everything? Or will Oregon get their revenge? That is what we're here to break down today. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks down in the description below. We now have our holiday special out there for you guys. $34.99 gets you every single conference championship spread pick, every college football bowl game spread pick, and every single NFL playoff game spread pick. A lot of postseason picks there, guys. Just $34.99. We've hit over 60% of our bets this year. We've hit 60% of our postseason bets each of the last five years. If you want guaranteed winnings, if you want to win big with us, this is the place for you. Consider it our gift to you for this season, guys. Again, go check it out. The link down in the description below. So let's take a look. Oregon State, Oregon. Big time rivalry game. One that for many years, it was pretty lopsided. You know, Oregon, guys, has won 12 of the last 15 meetings against the Beavers. But they have lost two of the last three. Under Jonathan Smith, Oregon State has obviously seen a resurgence across the board. They've become not just a contender in the Pac-12, but on the national stage. And has been a contender against their in-state rival. And that included last year. Oregon, guys, probably wasn't going to make the college football playoff, but was in the running to make the Pac-12 championship game. They led the Beavers 31-10 with under three minutes left in the third quarter, led by 17 in the fourth quarter, and then multiple mistakes. After mistake after mistake hit the Ducks, the Beavers came back and won the game 38-34. One of the wildest games of the year, one of the most shocking outcomes of the year, really, on how that game unfolded. Again, a 21-point comeback in less than 18 minutes of play. So, again, that was a game that... Uh, again, Oregon makes one less mistake. They probably win the game, but shoulda, woulda, coulda. Oregon State found a way to get the win and route to their big 10-win season. So you look at it this year. Can Oregon State do it again? We'll start with the Beavers on offense. They are very balanced. I'll give them that. They are very, very balanced. 441 yards per game, 248 through the air, 192 on the ground. Uh, and that's what this team wants to do, right? The Beavers want to run the football. That's how dominant they are up front. They've got a great offensive line. They've got a 1,100-yard rusher in Damian Martinez. Deshaun Fenwick has rushed for nearly 500 yards and five touchdowns. That's what they want to do. And why wouldn't you when you're so loaded up front and when you've got such great running backs? DJ Uyunglele, though, you can't disregard this guy. He got so much hate uh, down at Clemson, really didn't perform very well at the Tigers, came here to Corvallis to kind of revitalize his career, and he's done that. Over 2,400 yards, 20 touchdowns, just six interceptions, but unfortunately did throw two costly ones last week against Washington in the Beavers' 22-20 home loss to the Huskies, a game that would have de definitely shaken up the Pac-12 standings, the playoff race, and would have kept Oregon State's uh, Pac-12 title hopes alive. Those are now long gone. Uh, you've got Silas Bolden, though. You've got Anthony Gold. These are two receivers that have over 600 reception yards. Again, this is a team that wants to run the ball, but this is a team that has shown they can win through the air and, and a team that has shown that DJ Uyungle can deliver. Take a look at Oregon. My God, I mean, their offense is unbelievable. Number two overall in the entire country, averaging over 540 yards per game. 350 of those coming through the air, 195 on the ground. So very balanced, too, just in a very different way. Obviously a very pass-heavy team, and why wouldn't you be when you have a Heisman Trophy contender in Bo Nix, who is absolutely ridiculous. Over 3,500 passing yards on the year, 35 touchdowns, just two interceptions. That's it. This guy has phenomenal ball security. He is so, so good. And keep in mind, last year, while he did play in the game against Oregon State, he was a little banged up in that game. He was a little banged up entering the game. Was not as mobile uh, as the Ducks would have liked. Am I blaming that, uh, that reason on the loss? No, not at all. But I'm saying he is 100% now. That's going to be a huge boost for the Ducks. You got a 1,000-yard rusher in Bucky Irving. Ten touchdowns on the year for him. Troy Franklin, a wide receiver, has over 1,200 reception yards, 13 touchdowns. And Tez Johnson very well could see 1,000 reception yards by the end of the year. 805 yards on the year after Oregon State, after the Pac-12 championship. If they can win this game, probably will have 1,000 reception yards, which is truly unbelievable. This is a fast offense. This is a, an efficient offense. And really, it's an offense that so far this year has been dang near unstoppable. 
They have one loss on the year by three points to Washington uh, in a game that they probably could have, should have won had Dan Lanning made punted the ball away. You never know what could have happened, but Oregon still dropped 33 points in that game and still had a chance to tie the game, miss the field goal with no time left. So this is an Oregon team, guys. No one's really come close to slowing down. They're going to score on you. It's just a matter of can your offense match them and can you maybe force Oregon to a handful of mistakes to give your offense a couple extra possessions, all that stealing possessions if you're a defense facing Oregon. And that's what Oregon State is going to be tasked with entering this game on Friday night, by the way. Friday night, not Saturday. Oregon State, they're 28th overall in total defense. That's not bad. They're giving up just 326 yards per game. That's not bad. They're giving up just 103 rushing yards per game. That's not bad. So clearly, what this tells me is that Oregon State has the capability to, to beat Oregon. They have the capability to slow down Oregon. But to do it, they're going to have to stop Bo Nix. You're going to have to stop Bo Nix. And here's the thing. One does not stop Bo Nix. You can only hope to slow him down. That is all you can hope to do. And Oregon State's secondary isn't all that great. They're 62nd versus the pass, allowing 223 passing yards per game. Yes, they held Washington and Michael Penix and the number one passing attack in the country, held them to just 162 passing yards last week. That was also in a game that featured a lot of drops by Washington receivers due to the heavy amount of rain in that game in Corvallis. So again, I think it's a perfect crystal clear night. I think Washington has a lot more passing yards in that game. Oregon State allowed 275 passing yards to Arizona, Noah Fafita. They allowed 422 passing yards to Washington State earlier in the year. So against quality quarterbacks, uh, the Beavers have not necessarily fared very well. And Bo Nix is more than just a quality quarterback. This is arguably the best quarterback they've faced all year. The top two would be Michael Penix and Bo Nix. This is a defense, though, for the Beavers that have 36 sacks on the year. This is a team that has forced 19 turnovers. And like we said, forcing Oregon into mistakes, forcing them into some second, third, and long situations, that's what you have to do if you're the Beavers because you will not simply stop this Oregon offense. You will not simply stop Bo Nix. You can hope to slow them down and steal some possessions, and that's what they have to do. Oregon defensively, we, we talk so much about the offense, right? It's Bo Nix this, Bo Nix that, how fast they are. Oh, look at the high-scoring games, this, that, and the other. We're not really talking about Oregon's defense, and we should. Dan Lanning, mind you, was a defensive-minded guy, right? Came from Georgia, helped engineer some of the best defenses in Georgia's football history. Now he's at Oregon. This is his bread and butter, his defense. And they're 16th overall in the country in total defense, allowing just 310 yards per game. That's it. Also, key number here, 96.2 rushing yards per game. That's all they're allowing. Oregon has been dominant against the run, guys. The most rushing yards they've allowed all year was 174 back in week two against Texas Tech. Since then, they've been dominant against the run. Since that game, they have not allowed more than 111 rushing yards in a single game. That's nine straight games holding opponents to under 100 and, let's say, 115 rushing yards. If you hold Oregon State to under 115 rushing yards, you've got this game in the bag. No doubt about it. The Beavers have to have balance. They've got to get the ground game going. If they become one-dimensional and say, hey, DJ, you got to win this game solely through the Air Force. It's all on you. You have to not just win it for us, but you've got to keep up and keep pace. Maybe outduel Bo Nix. Yeah, Beavers are screwed. Hate to tell you that. Hate to be so blunt, but it's true. Oregon has been so dominant against the run. Nine straight games holding opponents to under 115 rushing yards. If Oregon State cannot eclipse that, if they can't eclipse, I'd say 130, 140, they're in trouble, and they're not going to win. And bottom line is, they're not going to win. They're not going to win. This Oregon team, guys, has been absolutely unbelievable all year long. Even in their loss to Washington, they were unbelievable. Just had a missed field goal there and, and obviously was unable to convert late in the game. They convert, they win. They keep the field goal to go and go to overtime. I think they win. This Oregon team is, without a doubt, the best one-loss team in the country. They are absolutely dominant on both sides of the ball. And they're getting to host their in-state rival in Eugene with a spot in the Pac-12 championship on the line. Their playoff hope still very much alive. Keep in mind, this is the first time probably since 2014 uh, – you know, that we've seen Oregon's playoff hopes alive this late into the year. They know they made the playoff back in 2014, made the national championship, but there have been so many years where you've seen Oregon second to last week of the year, third to last week of the year. They're in playoff contention and they lose a game they shouldn't or they get beat really bad. Uh, I know they lost uh, to Utah a couple years ago in the Pac-12 championship game. That was one too. But I mean, this is a Oregon team that has everything still very much in front of them and Dan Lanning and the Ducks are not going to let that get taken away from an in-state rival that upset them last year. Revenge on the mind of the Ducks, no doubt about it. Uh, and against an Oregon State team that simply does not have the firepower to keep up with the Ducks offensively. Oregon wins this game big 
in Eugene. They take out their frustrations on the Beavers. They get hyped. They're ready to go. Friday night, the Ducks win by double digits. They finish the year 11-1, and it will set up a massive Pac-12 championship game, a rematch between the Ducks and the Huskies with a playoff berth on the line. We, as college football fans, could not ask for anything more, anything more perfect, anything more fitting. Oregon beats Oregon State, and let's get ready for the championship for next Friday night. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks and our new holiday special. Great picks over there for a very, very low price. Go check it out. Sign up for those today and become a member of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.